You're listening to The Travelers Podcast, a podcast for the over 30s who like to travel. We're your hosts, Leanne and Al Elliott, and we're a husband and wife team who've been full-time travelers since 2017. You can follow our adventures, see our honest reviews, and get links to everything mentioned in this podcast at travelers.com. Okay, welcome to episode six of the Travellers podcast. Uh, we're here with Abby from Box Hotel, is that right? That's right. Yeah, Box Hotel. Um, it's a really interesting concept in Goa, uh, in Baga Beach, um, and I'll get him to talk a little bit more about it. The uh, reason we want to talk to him is because we've never seen any hotel quite like this before. Um, so, can you describe the hotel to our listeners? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, the hotel is a concept hotel. Um, It is a container hotel. So what we've done is we've just taken containers, put them together, and we've uh, kind of carved out rooms into it. And the whole idea is that the hotel had to be upcycled. So 72% of all the materials that we've used here are upcycled. They're not even recycled, so they're reused in a sense. So what we wanted to do was make a small micro hotel, which had a maximum of 20 rooms. This one has 16 and it had to have a pool and a small bar and a restaurant and the hotel is all about predator pricing we're all about optimization and uh, we're all about cost cutting so it was you know it was interesting to work on but i think the outcome was far better than what we actually hoped for so in, in a nutshell that's exactly what this this concept is about so it's all about um you know keeping our costs down recycling being good to the environment And at the same time, try to have a little bit of fun while we're at it as well. Fantastic. Well, we've been staying here now for, I think, six nights, maybe seven nights. nights. Yeah, six Six nights. nights. And uh, we can see that obviously your your guests love it here. (laughs) Just before we go on to your background, could you tell us a bit about the pool? Because I think that's quite interesting. Yeah. So um, when we started um, thinking about the initial concepts of this particular hotel, um, um, it's in, it's interesting where the the inspiration came from. Well, I was in school in in I mean I was in university in in the UK, and uh, most of the buildings there are pretty old, and you do have a building code to actually go by, and sometimes you'd have to do repair works, and those repair works used to take a lot of time. So we used to receive an email saying that you'd have to shift your venue to a temporary classroom and then they'd be set up near one of the football fields inside shipping containers overnight. So when I saw this for the first time, I said, you know, this is a great solution for housing. It's a great solution for, um, you know, office spaces or anything of that sort. But then I was more interested in the whole upcycling um, angle of it. So we decided to use that material wherever we could. And we, we know that there's a lot of industrial waste around and containers are just one part of it. As um, the, uh, according to the Shipping Council of India, there are about 11 million shipping containers in India and hardly, not even, not even 20% of those are used. So 80% of these are just rotting away in shipping yards and in docks everywhere and they're corroding and you know just going to waste essentially. It's far cheaper for them to stockpile them than to send them to a company in China that will melt them and then convert them into uh, usable steel for either automobiles or shipping containers again. So we decided to use this material as much as we could. So not only have we made our bar out of a shipping container, our restaurant out of a shipping container, we thought we'll take it the full full length. and. We would actually make our swimming pool out of a shipping container as well. We're not the first ones to think of it. There have been people all over the country, all over the world actually, probably in Australia is where they first came up with a modular pool which can be transported around. But an in-ground shipping container, which is below ground, uh, we had to chop the top off, we had to you know, cut it down to size, we had to um, fabricate it in such a way that it becomes a little bit wider than a shipping, a shipping container because the forms of these things are, are defined. They're eight feet wide by nine and a half feet tall and 40 feet long. So we can't have a swimming pool which is nine and a half feet deep all throughout. So we had to cut it, fabricate it to our, um, to our specifications. And it is, um, I think, India's first red color pool. Um, the, as you, if you can look around, the general scheme of things is that we want to keep the boxes as shipping container-esque as possible. So we wanted to maintain that uh, the stereotypical red color of a shipping container was the most common color. So we wanted to have, we said, 
why don't we just take it forward and just make a red color pool? And I think that's our biggest selling point today. It is a shipping container pool. It is in ground. And the fact that it's red makes it so much more unique. I think three fourths of the people who come here love the pool. And that's um, that, that's one of the good parts about, you know, having your own free hand. It's your own thing. It's, you know, you make it what you want it to be. And we're extremely proud of the way it came out. It does look fantastic. It does. It? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Never seen anything like it before. Really? Yeah, it's great. Right. So going back to your background then, yeah. <clears throat> you mentioned you were in, uh, in Leeds. Yeah. Uh, how long were you in the UK for? For about five years. And was that mainly around Leeds? Um, yes, um, just around Leeds. Um, I went to university in Leeds and then after that um, I started working for the NHS through a consulting firm and uh, they pretty much made me travel all around England. We used to um, you know, go around looking for, uh, you know, we, we used to work in private healthcare trusts, putting our softwares into their computers and things of that sort. So. I've traveled probably the length and breadth of England and, and uh, I can mention places that people would be pretty surprised that, you know, uh, a little boy from India would probably, <laughs> you know, will visit that place even though yeah. why would you even visit the place? So it's not even on the tourist map or anything of that sort, but I had a fantastic time. Um, so yeah, I, I did uh, process consulting for, um, wait, the company that I worked for did process consulting for the NHS for some time and after which I came back to India and I was immediately bitten by the real estate bug because my family had some background in it as well. And uh, we weren't going through such a good time as a family back then. But um, I decided that since we have vested interest in real estate, uh, it's better to dive head deep into it. So that was my introduction to organized real estate as in the professional way. I used to help my dad out in his business, but uh, it was hardly called professional because I was just a kid back then. And then <clears throat> when I started working for these companies, I, I realized that there's a huge potential, um, you know, for cheaper housing, cheaper office spaces, pop-up office spaces, um, especially in a place like India where infrastructure is kind of dwindling and being developed at the same time. So obviously a big corporate who's into real estate would not take this concept seriously because for them it's all about numbers it's all about brick and mortar and steel and you know and that's where they get their money from there were a lot of issues with actually coming up with a concept like this because nobody had ever thought about it seriously before so there is no bylaws there were no finances which were actually available for something like this so um, a big part of this was using my know-how from real estate and the finance aspect of it to make people believe that there is a business here um, so yeah, so my background from real estate and and uh, process consulting e-commerce has really helped me make this what it is today. So that's a little bit about my my background. Besides which, I'm just a regular guy. Likes my free time. Likes to spend time with my friends and and um, you know we we just like talking about new concepts. And I think India is the bedpan for startups and and innovations today. And I don't think I've innovated in any way. This is an old concept in the West, but as far as um, India is concerned, it's probably, we are the, the front runners as far as this particular concept is concerned. Brilliant. So what's it like to be in business in India? By the way, we're just going to put the air conditioning on in this room sure. because <laughs> so you'll get a little bit of a background hum <laughs> from now on. Um, yeah, so what's it like to be in business in India? Um, business in India is, is quite challenging. I mean, the, the recent governments um, have tried to make it as simple as possible with single window operations. Um, but believe me, a single window is hardly a single window. Uh, there are so many loopholes, there are so many departments that go into making... Let's just take a hotel, for example. Um, now, you can go to a single window platform like your local town council. Uh, over here, we have different words for it, but just for the sake of understanding, it's like a, a council. You go there, you apply for all the permissions. They can give you a permission to set up a restaurant, a bar, um, a small mini resort with X number of rooms and a swimming pool. So they can give you all those permissions. But the minute you start working on it, you suddenly realize that you need permission from the coastal regulatory zone because you are in a coastal area. So that's a totally different department as well. So now you have to go there. And then after that, once you're almost done with your construction, now you have to go and apply for a, a license to run a restaurant. 
Now you get a license to construct a restaurant from your town council, but there's a totally different department that gives you the license to run your hotel and your restaurant and your bar. So obviously it's if if you're well versed in this in these processes, which to be honest with you, besides all my experience in real estate, my my experience is setting up things, but to really run it, that's the business. Yeah, that's the business angle. Um, I fell in love with a particular concept. I fell in love with a particular uh, topic like upcycling. And I said the only way I can get paid for it is if I put it in a hotel and people would pay me for it. But the whole business angle of that was completely different. So I had to learn about this as we went, you know, went about setting it up. Um, there were consultants. There were lawyers on the way. There's a lot of paperwork. And um, to be very honest with you, in, in a single word, it's hard. It's, it's, not, it's not easy at all. Finances, um, with the turn in the global markets today, banks in India have always been very conservative. So to actually convince them to lend you some money because you have a certain passion and you want to run behind that is such a difficult thing because they know brick and mortar they know businesses which are production based or restaurants or something like that but the minute you tell them that it's a concept and it's going to be in a semi temporary structure which can be moved from place to place and you're going to make it work it's kind of difficult being in goa goa actually made things a lot um, easier for us uh, because it is a tourism driven state and Goa is the epicenter of tourism as far as India is concerned. It is the Mecca, which is why we chose Goa as our first location, even though we're not based out of Goa. Um, and it's our litmus test. So if it works here, it can work. I mean, if it doesn't work here, it'll never work anywhere else. Let's just put it that way. Um, but if it could work here, it doesn't necessarily mean it'll work in other places. But we have a framework now that we've been able to learn from, and this is our test. Uh, or you, you could say it's a concept and then it, it's taken shape now, it's on ground, it's running. And um, Goa was a place that made it so much easier for us because they said, if it's tourism, we will support you. And even though that meant running around to different departments and getting everything done, but there was a clear structure in how you had to go about doing that. And the people over here are quite friendly, um, as long as you don't step over their shoes mm -hmm. but um, as far as tourism is concerned there's a lot of knowledge as far as Goa is concerned so it was pretty easy for us to jump onto that bandwagon learn from other people's experiences and then take it forward and Goa is a very small state very few people so everybody kind of knows everybody so it was easy to get about this but in bigger places like in other states probably Maharashtra or any other coastal state that we have I, I presume that doing business of this sort would be quite quite difficult. But on a general note, doing business in India is hard. Yeah. Um, you're, the people over here are quick to adapt. Um, they're extremely intelligent and they're extremely innovative. And they'll find ways to, you know, to either counter you or be your next competition. Or if you're stepping into a market that already has established players, it's a, it's a no-go as far as India is concerned. So if you have... A product or a service which is revolutionary I think India is a great place to do business because everybody jumps onto the bandwagon but if you want to come here and do business in, a, in an established place like Goa um, and tourism and hotels I mean how do you differentiate yourself in an already saturated market where everybody knows what they're paying for you have to be a differentiator and if you are a differentiator you'll be you'll be surprised as long as you stick within the framework and legality of things how doors will open for you and everybody wants to say that they've been a part of it or they've helped in some way so india is all about brownie points india is all about it's all about innovations inventions so for us in india if you're getting into an established market an established industry it's quite hard doing something for the first time, it's quite hard as well. But then you get a lot of encouragement along the way. So business in India is hard. <laughs> so do you think you've got, or have you got plans to open any more of these? Sure. So um, what the property that you're sitting in um, is a special purpose vehicle created for beach locations. So that's why we call it the Beach Box Hotel. Um, then we have locations which are inside coffee estates, which are on the hills. Uh, so it's a very beautiful, very... Um, 
it's going to be a glamping exercise because they're forests. Essentially, coffee estates in India are forests. Um, they have huge canopies. It looks like a, a tropical rainforest. And uh, those are going to be called plantation boxes because you're supposed to be inside um, coffee plantations. Right. We have a couple of locations which are um, identified in Bangalore and Mumbai. So those will be called the urban boxes. Um, we also know that India is fiercely religious. So there are a lot of temples everywhere. And uh, that's a huge market as far as people really will travel to go to a temple or a pilgrimage or something like that. So we have temple boxes which are planned. Um, so right now we've we've um, I think by the year two thousand and twenty one we will have three more units, um, which are going to be in Sakleshpur, which is a coffee estate location in the south of India, and we will have one more in Mumbai. Uh, we'll have one more in Goa and one in Mumbai. So that's the expansion plan by twenty twenty one. It doesn't take too long to put these things up. It's uh, it's about one hundred and eighty days in total to actually make one of these from scratch. So it's it's a fast and fun process and we're we're looking forward to it. Expansion is exp is is exciting as of course. Yeah. Is there ever a point where you felt it might be too hard and you wanted to give up? Every single day of those 180 <laughs> days I think. <laughs> because um, when we started construction and uh, you might be able to explain more to your your listeners as to where we are. We have bridges connecting us to this side of uh, the Baga area. So there's a big bridge down the road which got demolished because they were expanding it. And then along that main Baga road which brings down all the traffic from Kalangu down to Tito's Lane and down this way, there was a lot of work going on for upgrading the drainage system. So every five days they would dig a huge hole in the middle of the road and start putting in all this piping and, and that would take about 10 days to, to complete. And at, it's at that point of time when I needed to bring these containers in. So there are various departments you need to co coordinate with. To start off with um, the electrical department because you have electrical wires everywhere and these, um, these 40 foot long containers, nine and a half feet tall, sit on 40 foot trailers behind trucks and these trailers are already five and a half feet off the floor. So you're talking about 14 and a half feet height and so in some places the wires droop or sag because of the heat in Goa so they would touch the containers so you had to get in touch with the electrical department so they'd switch off the electricity temporarily and convince the locals that we're going to have you without electricity for about 45 minutes and then we had to lift the wires up and then take these containers through that narrow road in a huge truck and then only to find that we had coordinated with the civil department of the, camp, of the city and said, don't dig a hole because my 40-foot trailer is coming this way. And they would have dug a hole anyway. <laughs> so there are departments in this, in this country that refuse to talk to each other. And even if we do talk to each other and we tell everybody this is what we wanted, I mean, there's so much of corruption in this country. Everything is a bribe. We would have done everything right. We would have paid everybody properly. But then ultimately... Um, you know, we had to take that entire 40-foot container in reverse back that narrow road with the debauchery and everything in this in this city. Bars are keep, you know, kept open until 5 o'clock in the morning and somebody cuts out the lights at, at 3.30 for about 45 minutes. So you find a lot of disgruntled drunk people on the road throwing bottles at your truck. And, um, you know, it's, it's so difficult. We had to coordinate with the cranes. We had to coordinate with the trucks. We had to coordinate with four departments just to get in one container and then you have a hiccup like, hiccup like that and that happened to me multiple times. So we've used 17 containers to make this um, you know, th th this particular hotel and it might have happened to me about 26 times. Oh my God. So, <laughs> you know, th there were days like that when I, when I really felt like, you know what, it's just not worth it. You know, whatever money spent, it can be, can be earned back one day. Yeah. Let's just call it quits. But, I don't know, something inside me said, you know, it's, it's just a test. It's just a test. And if you can persevere through this, I think um, there will be happier days on the other side. And it posed a challenge as well. So there's one side of me that said, you know, what's this challenge? Let's just take it up. I'm not from here and I'm not from the city. I don't speak the language. Uh, let me just try and make this happen. But I think that side of me won. And fortunately for me, because today I'm... I'm pretty proud of what we've been able to accomplish. We're just 
um, we're just kids here, you know. And I wouldn't have been able to do it without my team. My team was fantastic. And I've even employed them even beyond um, the completion of this place. It's been about two years now. And I, they're still on my roles. Um, they do their own job. But anytime I need them, they're all ready to come together yeah. and kick off another project. So I'm, I'm really happy we went through the entire exercise. That is brilliant. That's such a great story. So if anyone's interested in booking... <laughs> Uh, to, to come and stay here, mm -hmm. uh, should they go to your website? Or? Oh, well, we're, we're available across all platforms. Right. Um, I think uh, from the side of the world where you're from, most people are on booking.com or Expedia. Um, okay. We have excellent ratings there. Um, they can go read up our reviews. Um, you're here on the off season, so our bar and restaurant is not full fledged. But if you do come back here in the season, we have a couple of events lined up every week where we have certain genres of music playing and um, you know, we'll have some specials and stuff like that. So it's, pre it, it's pretty booked throughout the year. So, you know, if you, if you plan early, I think you can find that Booking.com does a pretty good job at aggressively beating us down on our prices mm -hmm. and giving the best to their customers. So I think, um, I think Booking.com is a great platform. Yeah. Um, then we're available across all other platforms as well, like Expedia. You can Google us and it'll take you to six different websites who are offering our rooms, we're tied up with everybody. Um, so, yeah, that's where they should look at it, ideally. Uh, you could go to brand.com, you could go to my website, but um, I think you get a better price if you go online. I still get paid what I'm supposed to get paid, by the way, so I'm okay. <laughs> well, I'll put some uh, pictures in the show notes here because yeah. you've got to see some pictures. Uh, Abby, it's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you as well. Um, it's, it's, been, um, it's been a great pleasure having you here as our customer as well. And um, if there's anything that we can do to you know, give you more information or if there's anything that we can do to make the rest of your stay, I know you have six hours left <laughs> in the hotel. Uh, we would gladly like to extend that for you. But um, you know, if there's anything else that we can do for you, just please let us know. Abby, thank you very much. Thank you All so right, much. Thanks. You've been listening to the Travelers Podcast. Thanks for listening and head on over to travelers.com for all the show notes and links mentioned in the show.